Welcome to the first tutorial for Nestmaker 4.1.0. And we know you have this profound dream of making Super Mario 3 meets Ninja Gaiden meets Rad Racer that makes use of the power pad and the power glove. But slow down, your experience level probably does not match your ambition. We must start this quest at the beginning and grind our way up. This tutorial assumes that you've downloaded Nestmaker 4.1.0 from the site thenew8bitheroes.com and that you've got your activation code in your email. Uh, if you haven't done that, you can go to the site and get those two things. And when you uh, extract the zip file for Nestmaker, extract it to your desktop. It's, it's always a good idea because if you put it inside a folder, those folders can sometimes uh, be behind administrative privileges and then some of the, the software won't actually work correctly. So extract it to your desktop for starters and go ahead and open up the folder and open Nestmaker 4.1.0. And once you've activated it, you should see something like this. So getting started, let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, it's basically split into three parts. Uh, you've got your, your menu, uh, you know, your menu bar with your, with your menus. Uh, you've also got yeah, the, what we call the hierarchy. And this is, this is all the stuff that your game will be comprised of. Your sounds, your graphics, your text, uh, your scripts, all, your inputs, all, all the things that make up your game that are editable are here. And in this workspace, when you actually click on one of these things, uh, if I click on the overworld, uh, a dialog box with that information where I can actually edit the properties of that thing shows up in this workspace area. So for instance, if I looked at a player game object, the stuff that makes up the player game object shows up over here. If I looked at a palette, um, if I looked at a palette, the palette information shows up here in the workspace. So uh, if I'm talking about the hierarchy, I'm talking about this over here. If I'm talking about the workspace or a dialog box, I'm talking about what shows up over here. And if I'm talking about the menu bar or the toolbar, I'm talking about what's here at the top of the screen. Easy, just like most software that you've probably used. In fact, if you used programs like Game Maker, Unity, uh, RPG Maker, this should look vaguely familiar to you uh, the way it's set up now because of the nest constraints, it functions a little bit differently but it should look somewhat familiar. So uh, let's jump right in and start a new project, all right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File, New, or you can hit the New button here on the toolbar, and we are gonna create a blank tile set, and we are gonna call it uh, My Test Game. The starting module that we're gonna use is the base module, and we're gonna hit OK. Now let's talk about what that just did. Uh, the first thing that it did was, if I look at my graphic assets folder, you're gonna see that I've got a My Test Game folder there. I've also got some other cleverly titled folders, such as My Dumb First Game Thing and UGG, uh, as well as you'll see the tutorial games up here. Uh, this folder contains all the graphics that this game will use. And now when you activate any of the graphic uh, uh, icons over here, it's going to reference these files that are in this new folder that you just made. And you don't really have to think about that too much, um, just, just to be aware of it. The other thing that it did was, uh, if I go into project settings, and I go to script settings, it loaded all of the necessary scripts to run a base module game. Um, so this is where you'd actually uh, get in and edit what things do. For instance, here's all your tile collisions. So if I wanted to change what a tile collision can do, I could click on one of these and choose, okay, tile zero does this thing. We're not even gonna talk about that yet. Don't have to worry about scripts. You don't have to worry about scripting. You don't have to worry about programming language, nothing like that. I just wanted you to be aware of what's happening when you choose that base module. Um, so I'm gonna close this project settings and return to this uh, the home here. And uh, now the, the last thing I'm gonna do to set up this new game is I'm gonna download uh, emulator. Uh, I recommend using Messen, M-E-S-E-N, uh, you can down, you can search for that on Google and download the latest version. And we're gonna set this project to open with Messen. Now, if I go ahead and export and test the game right now, it will work, it will compile, and it will open in an emulator. But right now, it's going to open in our emulator, the emulator that comes with the tool, the Mystic Searches emulator that developer Shiru made for our project uh, a long time ago. The problem with this emulator was it's never it was never meant to be a comprehensive emulator. It was mostly meant to be like a spot checker. Um, and so it doesn't have a lot of the cool debugging features that an emulator ha like Messen has. 
And uh, Messin is also a lot more accurate. This was never meant to be that. Sheer did an amazing job in cracking this out for us, but it was never meant to serve the purpose for you know what Nestmaker has become. So what I'd recommend doing is downloading an emulator, FCEUX or Messin are the ones I would suggest. Um, and you can go to your project settings, which is this little gear icon right here, and you can go to emulator. And now I can actually navigate to that emulator. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to say, okay, what emulator do I want to use? I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to go to mine is in Nest stuff in Messin. I don't know where you've saved yours, but you get the idea. Navigate to the uh, emulator application that you want to use. And then you have to go to your working folder. So navigate to your actual project, the project that we are just creating right now. Um, mine is in Nestmaker 410. It's inside game engine data and it's game.ness. And now I'm set up so when I run it, let me do this again. Now when I run the game, instead of opening in the Mystic Searches emulator, it's opening in Messin. And I can see I've got a lot of cool tools, debuggers. One of the cool things we're going to look at is the picture picture processing unit which shows what sprites are loaded what graphics are loaded what palettes are loaded things like that so super cool that's a that's how we get started in creating a new project the last thing i'm going to file save as and i'm i put usually my projects in my projects folder so i'm going to call this you know whatever i want to call it my first game let's call it that and i'm going to hit save and so now you can see that it's called my first game. And now just by hitting save, we'll update that save. So that's how we get started creating a project. And next we're going to look at how to start building graphics and importing graphics for our game.